Hi students, this is Suchya Data, SST teacher and now I am going to teach you the 10th chapter which is the last chapter of Geography class 7th and the name of the chapter is Life in the Deserts. In 5th chapter, you have learnt about water. Water which is so essential for the survival of human beings. Without water, we cannot live. There can be no crops, that is no vegetation and absolutely no animals and no human beings. That is water is the most essential factor for the survival of this beautiful mankind. But now we have to understand a place where there is scarcity or no water at all. What happens there? And let's talk about deserts now. Desert is in fact, when you ask me what is a desert? Desert is a place which has low rainfall, has scanty vegetation and extreme temperature. Just remember there are three characteristics of a desert which are low rainfall, scanty vegetation and extreme temperature. Extreme temperature need not necessarily be hot. It can be cold also. So in the world we have both the hot deserts and the cold deserts. First of all I will be talking about the hot desert of the world which is the Sahara Desert. Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert of the world. It is spread on 8.54 million square kilometer. Imagine endless desert. And this desert comprises of 11 countries. That is parts of them. We, it is there in Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Sudan, Tunisia and West Sahara. That is to say it is widespread. That is the hot desert of Sahara. Then you have to understand that generally a hot desert that you understand is made up of sand. You find sand and sand everywhere. But Sahara desert beside the stand, sand also has the gravel plains and it has elevated plateaus and bare rocky surface. Once again, we are going to revise as to what is the Sahara Desert made up of. Sand all around, gravel plains, elevated plateaus and bare rocky surface, which means five things. Sandy, gravel plains, elevated plateau and bare rocky surface. Sometimes these bare rocky surface could be as high as 2500 meters. Now let's talk about the climate of the Sahara Desert. We already know that Sahara Desert is a hot desert. Naturally, the climate here is scorching hot, parched dry and it has short rainy season. The sky is clear, cloudless. So it is a typical example of a hot desert. Then in the daytime the temperature soars to as much as 50 degrees centigrade and it heats up all the sand and the rocks and makes everybody boil. But in the night, it is freezing cold. The temperature goes to nearly 0 degrees centigrade. So that is the marvel. That's the extremity of the Sahara Desert climate. Let's talk about the flora and fauna of Sahara. As far as the plants are concerned, Naturally, there are cactus, date palms all around. And the animals found here are the camels, hyenas, jackals and foxes. Let's move on to the people living in the Sahara Desert. 
there are two major tribes living in the Sahara Desert and those are the Biduans and the Turaks. They are mostly the nomadic tribes and they rear sheep and cattle. From where they get milk, beside from the hides they make leather and from the leather they make belts and slippers and from the hair of the animals they make mats and blankets and coats. Well, as far as the oasis is concerned and the Nile Valley is concerned, that's the major part by which the population of this area is supported because the water is provided only by these two which helps in the growth of vegetation in the area. The people because water is available because of the oasis and the Nile Valley, valley grow the date palms, the rice, the wheat, the barley and the Egyptian cotton. The Egyptian cotton is very famous worldwide and it is grown in Egypt. That is why it is called as the Egyptian cotton. The discovery of oil has changed the face of Sahara Desert. It is such an important discovery that the entire world is looking up at Sahara. The other minerals which are found in Sahara is the iron, phosphorus, manganese and uranium. Well, you can see a complete change, a real development in Sahara. You see that there are glass cased huge buildings here and we also see that there are super highways running crisscross across Sahara, which means there is a complete development, real change in Sahara. Now from the hot desert, let me take you to the cold desert that is Ladakh. Ladakh lies in the great Himalayas and to the eastern side of Jammu and Kashmir. On the north of it is the Karakaram range and on the south is the Janskar mountain. Now in Ladakh, you find various rivers, that is many rivers flow here, which form deep valleys and gorges. And we also see that there are glaciers here. And the most important glacier is the Gangri Glacier. Since the altitude is very high, that is, it is at a great height, that is why the temperature here is very cold and dry because the air is very thin as the altitude is high that is why the air is thin and in the summers during the daytime the temperature could be say around 0 degree but in the night it could fall to minus 30 degree in summers I am talking of whereas in winters most part of the day and night experience the climate or the temperature around minus 40 degrees centigrade. That is the cold desert that is Ladakh. Now Ladakh falls in the rain shadow area of the Himalayas. So it gets very less rainfall that is almost 10 centimeters a year. So, in the beginning of the chapter, I told you about the various characteristics of a desert, whether hot or cold, in which we understood that the desert always gets very less rainfall. Well, there is free, there are freezing winds here along with hot sunlight. That's the characteristic of Ladakh, which means that you can have a sunstroke and a frostbite at the same time. That's about the extremity of the cold desert called Ladakh. Let's talk about the flora and fauna of Ladakh. There are willows, poplars and apples and apricots and walnuts in plenty in Ladakh. As far as birds are concerned, you'll see robins, you'll see raven, and you'll see hoop. 
and if you have to find out about the animals you will see lots and lots of wild goats, wild sheep, yak and wild dogs and these animals actually give them milk, meat and hides. Now let's talk about the people living in Ladakh. Most of them practice either Buddhism or they are Muslims. There are four main Buddhist monasteries found in Ladakh and those are Hemis, Thiksi, She and Lamayur. Well, in the summers, people can grow barley, potatoes, beans and turnips. But in the winters, they have to just engage themselves into festivities and ceremonies because the climate is very harsh. It is very, very cold at this point of time. As far as connectivity is concerned, the capital of Ladakh is well connected and National Highway 1 connects Leh to Kashmir through the Josela Park Pass. And this place, Ladakh, has one favorite industry and that is tourism. People get attracted towards the gompas, towards the meadows, towards the glaciers, festivities and ceremonies of this beautiful place called the Ladakh. The women here are very hard working. They not only work inside the house but also outside and do small businesses and run shops. The people of Ladakh since they live in such harsh climates, they've learned to have balance with nature. They don't destroy the nature. They actually have learned how to cope up and make a judicious use of nature. That's a beautiful cold desert of the world called the Ladakh. And that was all about your chapter. Thank you.